Hi, I'm Goose, and welcome back to Color Theory in Minecraft. This is episode four of the Deep Dive series. We have a lot to cover today, and we're getting into some of my favorite parts of color theory, which are color relativity and color interactions. But first, I have something very important that I need to talk to all of you about. While I was researching this video, I came across one of the most interesting color experiments I had ever seen. The experiment alleged that some cultures that don't have words for certain colors are unable to pick that color out from other different colors. It said that people in the Himba tribe in Africa were shown these two color wheels. While they could tell that this green was different, they were unable to differentiate between this blue and the rest of the green samples. This was supposedly because the Himba tribe doesn't have a word for blue. They just consider it a different kind of green. This was in a very popular BBC documentary and has been cited in several books. The problem is, the experiment was faked by BBC. A group of researchers led by Debbie Robertson were studying the Himba tribe and how they categorize color. Years later, BBC began working on a documentary about the subject. They needed footage, and some of the researchers were still in the area, so they contacted them. They were not currently working with the Himba tribe, so BBC requested that they get some B-roll footage for the segment. The researchers used an experiment that was for Korean and English speakers and ran a couple mock experiments with the material, just to be used as extra footage. This was not a real experiment, and they were not testing anything. It was just for the show. BBC then made up the entire story around the experiment and made some outrageous claims. This was without the knowledge or approval of the researchers. Debbie Robertson was contacted afterwards and specifically said that she had never seen an instance where someone was unable to differentiate one of the oddball colors, much less the Himba tribe. All of this to say, not everything you see presented as fact is true, and it is always worth looking deeper and questioning what you learn, even with me. I've had people point out mistakes, and I am happy to accept that feedback and make corrections. Quality of information is, unfortunately, rare these days, so it is on you to do what you can. Okay, enough of that rant. It's raining. Let's get into the episode. Most of the terms I'm going to use we covered in the first color theory video, but there is one new one, and I want to review everything just so we're all on the same page. To start, we have hue. This describes what color we're talking about. Red and green are different hues. Value is a measure of how light or dark a color is. Higher value is lighter, lower value is darker. In this chart, each row has the same value. This entire row has a value of 7, and this entire row has a value of 4. Chroma is a new one. Chroma is a measure of intensity of a color in relation to the pure hue that we're talking about. In this case, it's this one right here. This has a value of 8 and a chroma of 18. The closer to the pure hue it is, the higher the chroma. This row has a chroma of 16, 14, 12, and so on. Saturation, on the other hand, is a measure of the intensity of a color in relation to a gray that is the same value. That means all the colors along this diagonal have a saturation of 100%, even though they have different chroma. This one has a chroma of 6, but is still 100% saturated. That's because the closest that you can get to this pure hue, while still staying at this value, is this one right here. That is as saturated as it can get, even though it is not full chroma. So saturation is in relation to a gray of the same value, and chroma is in relation to the pure hue. We're going to talk a little bit about color spaces as well, so there's some terminology I want to cover there. But if you want to know more about color spaces, I really recommend checking out Nice Name. I'm going to put a link to his channel down below and up in the top right corner. If you haven't already, he does a lot of amazing content talking about color spaces specifically in the context of Minecraft. I really recommend it. This right here is a gamut. A gamut is the defined selection of colors that are within a color space. All the colors within a color space are contained within that space's gamut. The outer edge of a gamut is called the spectral locus. The spectral locus is where you're going to find all of the fully chromatic hues that are available in that color space, the pure hues. Pure hues are also called dominant wavelengths. Sometimes you may have a color and you need to find that color's dominant wavelength. Let's say this is your color right here, and you want to find the dominant wavelength or pure hue of that color. You can start at the white point or the center of the color space, and you can draw a line that's going to go through that color out to the edge. 
the point where this line meets the spectral locus of the color space is your dominant wavelength. This is the fully chromatic version of this color. I've said this before, and I think it's important to say again, that there is not a right or wrong way to work with color. There's a lot of science involved with color theory when it comes to describing things like how light works and how color works and why color interacts with other colors the way that it does. But once you turn to the application of color and the practice of color theory, it becomes very subjective. It becomes very influenced by culture and by region and by personal taste. So again, there's not a right or a wrong way to work with color. Color theory is just a collection of systems and ideas that help us describe and articulate and understand color and how we choose to use color. Remember, these are tools, not rules. Most of what we've talked about so far is in line with Isaac Newton's vision of color. He had a very scientific, mathematical approach to it to categorize it as a natural phenomenon. In Western color theory, this was the dominating view for a long time, until in the early 1800s, a German poet by the name of Goethe took a look at it and had some new ideas. Ernst Lairs once said, the essential difference between Goethe's theory of color and Newton's scientific study is as follows. The theory of Newton and his successors was based on excluding the color-seeing faculty of the eye, while Goethe founded his theory on the eye's experience of color specifically. What this means is Newton was focused on the math and the science of it, which was good and we learned a lot from it. But Goethe wanted to look at how humans experience color. How do our eyes see color? How does the environment affect it? How does our culture affect it? A lot of different things can affect the way that we look at color. Although Goethe never fully published a full theory of color, he collected a ton of information and kept it all together for us to use. In Western color theory, his work laid a huge foundation for people to start looking at color psychologically instead of physiologically, looking at the effects of color on the psyche instead of just how color works in the eye. In the early 1900s, this became a major driving force in the art world with artists like Clint, Kandinsky, Mondrian, and Rothko. Color became the subject of the art. It wasn't about painting people or pretty places, it was about looking at color and seeing how color can impact the viewer on its own. We've always known about the emotional impact of color, but this became very important to artists in that time period. Culture can have an enormous impact on views of color as well. Blue tends to be viewed as calming and safe in a lot of countries around the world, and that's one of the reasons that we see it used the most in advertising and marketing. It's a very safe color to use when you're talking to a global audience. I always think it's really interesting to see what colors people associate with different things. Like, what colors do you associate with the days of the week? Or what colors do you associate with different classes in school? Everybody has their own opinion on these, and it can be interesting to see what they think. But if you think that science isn't green, you're wrong. Something as simple as language can have an impact on how we see color as well. There's a recent experiment that was actually cited in a paper that was talking about opponent process and complementary color vision that looked at two groups. One of those groups were native English speakers, and the other group were from the Chamani tribe, which is a tribe in the Amazon. In this study, the Chamani only spoke their native language. They did not know English. Both groups were shown a collection of colors, and they were asked to pick red and green-blue. Once they had done this, they were then asked to pick the colors that were neither red nor green-blue at all. Almost all of the English speakers picked yellow or some variations of it that leaned towards brown. But the Chamani people picked a very wide selection of colors. Now, in the study, this was used to argue against opponent process theory, saying that if opponent process was true, then we would innately know yellow as a unique hue. Now, I think that this was actually more of a miscommunication. While the Chamani were able to say, this is red, this is blue-green, when asked to pick something that wasn't red-ish or blue-green-ish, it looks more like they just picked colors that were not red and not blue-green. But I don't know all the details of this experiment, so I can't say for sure. A lot of modern color theory right now is based around categorizing colors, finding new ways to do color spaces and new ways to mathematically represent colors so that we have a reliable, consistent, and uniform way to identify and label them. Again, if you want to know more about color spaces, go check out Nice Name. There's also been a lot of interesting research in how colors react with each other. This is what really, really interests me. You may remember this clip from my first color theory video about value and about how important relativity is when you're talking about color. I found a few more really interesting examples that I wanted to show you guys. The first two I pulled from an artist named Anthony Wychulis on Instagram. I really recommend checking out his paintings. He is one of the most amazing painters I've ever seen. Here's a few examples of his work. But he shared these two polls to see if people could determine which color was shown in the image. In the first one, 
you're trying to decide which one of these leaves is gray, A, B, or C. Pause it and take a minute to think which one you think is gray. Now the correct answer is B, and I pulled up a little closer shot so that you can see what I'm talking about. Do you see how pink the letter and that twig look in comparison to that leaf? Because of the colors around it in the full image, our mind just kind of tells us, yeah, leaves are green and sticks are brown, but when you really look at the image, that's not what you're seeing at all. In the next one, we have a picture of a sunflower, and we have that little line pointing at one of the petals. Now you'll see the palette of colors at the bottom. Try to decide which one of those colors that petal actually is. Now we know that sunflowers are yellow, and you can still tell that that sunflower is yellow in this field, but that's only because of its relation to the colors around it. In reality, that leaf is gray and is gonna match with G. Now for this next example, I can't seem to find who the artist was, so if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. I'll be really happy about that. But here's the example. The skin tone in both of these images is the same. On the left, it looks like white skin in a dimly lit area. Now we change all the other colors, the background, the colors of the hair and the eyes, to make it look like it is someone with black skin in a very well lit area. But the actual color of the skin doesn't change. Color theory is a very big and very quickly evolving field. There's still a lot more to learn and a lot more experiments to do. There's a lot of stuff that we can talk about, so there will be more videos coming up. All of my sources are cited down in the description. And as well, these color stickers that I have behind me, that is from a mod that was created by someone in the Discord server. And there's a link to the Discord server also in the description. And I have just a couple announcements. If you could stick around, I would really appreciate it. First off is we have a winner to the last contest. Contest was for a monochromatic build and the winner of the community vote and the judged vote was Pretty Girl with this amazing Bluebird build. Love it. All of their other builds are really, really cool too. Go check them out. I'll link them down in the description. They're in the Discord. Awesome stuff. The other announcement is I am now in an SMP. I am a new member in the Craftworks SMP. Season two just started. I know it's very different from these uh, color theory videos, but it would mean the world to me if you checked out those videos and let me know what you thought. Let me know how I'm doing. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy your day and week and month until I see you next. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. It means the world to me. And I hope you have a nice day. See ya.